Jason Halter is a partner in Wonder Inc., uh, which, which a, I think is a great uh, name for a company and I think is very indicative. When you go on their website, um, it, it has, I think, both a sense of whimsy but also a sense of these kind of multiple explorations that the firm does. So they uh, do graphic design, uh, they do uh, interior architecture, they do uh, books, they sell art, they make, uh, I think you have a, somewhere you say we make messages uh, on cards, on t-shirts. And so it's really, um, I mean, in some ways, I think there's a, a sort of interesting overlap with uh, Bruce Mao's present, or Hunter Torres' presentation from Bruce Mao this morning in terms of these kind of multiple outlets of, um, uh, of, of what an architect can do and how environments and identities are defined. But I think uh, Wonder Inc. is working at a very different scale um, it, it, which I th and, and different kinds of clients, which I think is very interesting. Um, he describes himself as uh, a Renaissance art history and architecture scholar, a furniture and interiors designer, an art producer and collector, a design engineer and inventor of small modular buildings, and that's actually another component of their practices. They've been doing some very innovative work looking at prefabrication. Um, they uh, look at material innovations, and actually he has collaborated with Christos Marco, Marco yeah, Polos, who yeah, is yeah. Uh, currently teaching in 2A. Um, uh, they do typography and branding, um, uh, and then you are a lifelong sportsman, uh, a tree planter, and an urban park designer. So um, I will turn it over to Jason. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks very much. Um, thanks a lot, Lola. Uh, yeah, I, I do have a, a as always, a, a large uh, sh shout out to, uh, to Bruce Mao, uh, who uh, you know, we worked with uh, a fair long time ago, but uh, very much influenced um, our practice today. And uh, the, in particular, the studio at the time was quite small, so uh, we, we uh, I, I really uh, pay homage to, to Bruce in, in lots of ways. Uh, thanks for inviting me very much. Um, I have to forewarn you, uh, the collector half of Wonder showed up today to present our work, uh, the editor half, uh, Anita Matyshevitz and my partner in life and work for the last 25 years, uh, alas, remained uh, at the studio. So as a result, I thought I'd talk about our process and show our work uh, with a relentless uh, loop of images. Um, so here we go. As uh, makers, we use images to show process. And in this case, the range of work uh, we've had the good fortune to experiment with. We've been out of school for, uh, oh, I'd say about 20 years and have uh, worked in teaching, building, uh, architecture, graphic arts, uh, communication, signage, art, fashion, uh, landscape, branding, and publishing. About five years ago, we became very involved with uh, the issue of alternative energy solutions and begun uh, first studying and then building modular constructions. Uh, primarily using shipping containers and later developing some of our own engineered uh, modules uh, for prefabrication and assembly. Some of these have been installed in China, Ecuador, California, Louisiana, Nova Scotia, and uh, here in Ontario with another company I founded called Meka Modular Buildings. In concert with these, uh, we've also become involved in the building and implementing of off-grid solutions for our dwellings as well as uh, uh, a continual building uh, of 5 and 10 watt solar tracking systems for the micro feed in tariff that the Ontario Power Authority began to offer, I believe, in 2008 when we started. In addition, uh, Meka, uh, to make a wonder, also launched a resilient microarchitecture project that has more to do with uh, off grid infrastructure supply to remote sites. Uh, these small scale units have more to do with uh, utility than with space making uh, design. In fact, for us, uh, design is not so much uh, an aesthetic, but a long and sometimes uh, tortured, uh, torturous iterative process. Uh, the built work we've done and are currently working on is neither beautiful nor precious, but part of a serial development. Um, we prefer to think in terms of systems and iterations, which is what modular construction and prefabrication focuses on, as does practical storage solutions and space-saving uh, aspirations. Uh, as a certified sustainable building advisor with the Canadian Green Building Council, 
I'm continually uh, looking for alternatives and solutions to energy systems and for novel and renewable uh, uses in material choices in order, I guess, to be mindful uh, of our dwindling uh, material resources. In part, this is why we're preoccupied with trying to build smaller dwellings and maximize energy systems, as well as uh, implement more and more storage in each and every building and project. This iterative systems approach is embodied in the work we're currently engaged with in publishing, in the books and furniture we make, from the micro-architecture we manufacture and assemble, to the millwork and small-scale architecture we augment buildings with, and includes a large-scale project that we're also involved with currently. Uh, from the extra small scale, designing jewelry commissions from Jade um, Mind here in British Columbia to the large uh, or, or extra large commissions to design and implement a 200,000 square foot medical marijuana facility in uh, Ontario, we remain mindful of the materials, construction methodology and sustainable requirements that are embedded in the scope and overall concept of the work. Um, then there's art. The art of production, uh, the art of living, the art of surviving as a design entrepreneur, and the art of making. We spend a lot of time in art. We work with filmmakers, photographers, painters, sculptors, curators, fabricators, musicians, and performers. We collaborate and aspire to common goals and often find gaps and large mistakes in, in between that not coincidentally become art. Critics post-rationalize. Before I tell you a bit more, I guess, about our path to practice and how we got started, I wanted to mention that this kaleidoscope of images I'm showing here represents some of the work we've done uh, with, a, with a, a couple of nods to Bruce Mao, my mentor, uh, and as well from a small handful of co-opted images that we take inspiration from. Uh, it also helps when you're in the world of image making as well as in architecture that we try to uh, beg, borrow, and steal ideas, uh, somehow twisting and turning them into our own creations, and citing where possible any and all references to authorship. It's okay to borrow ideas if you just cite where they came from. Also, as if it's not apparent, we take tons of photographs and have done so for about 25 years, since uh, back when, when you had to be careful because film actually cost more than you think to process, and that's all we had at the time because that's all there was uh, in the pre-digital world. Um, I encourage you all, obviously, to do the same, to take tons of photos with your smartphones and iPhones, or dare I say, with a real camera. Uh, and it even, uh, uh, which I think should ha have a great lens, uh, even better perhaps than the new iPhone 6 has packed into its sleek new shape. The, the funny thing with art and, architect and our architecture as makers is that if you don't document your work as it's happening, you'll have a harder time doing it later. So take photos anywhere and all the time. And I don't mean of people and food. Uh, I mean of what you make uh, and, the, and the things you find. Those images will sustain you and you will use them much more than anything else. Um, I guess uh, by virtue of uh, a general discussion, um, I thought I'd try and explain where, where, I, where I got started and uh, perhaps later, if you would like, you can ask questions about some of the images we're showing. Some of them have uh, greater uh, continuity and then there's obviously this random curation which is also part of our uh, uh, overall uh, practice. Uh, um, we, we, uh, we graduated, uh, Anata and myself, in uh, 1993, um, and um, at the time it was, uh, it was a um, fair, fair recession uh, that uh, rendered us uh, looking for uh, any and all kinds of work, and in some ways that prepared us for uh, the next couple of decades. Um, I recall uh, being actually found out by, by Bruce, uh, who was doing reviews at our school at the time, and, and he, uh, he brought a couple of us in uh, to work on uh, photocopying and doing wax layouts of uh, a really cool book at the time uh, by, uh, by, uh, by him and, and Rem Coolhouse. So we were there at 
photocopier working on SML XL and trying to make sense of what we were doing and trying not to screw up with, uh, you know, uh, enlarging and, and, uh, and uh, producing layouts at random, which actually later became a, a, a project that uh, we undertook uh, with Bruce called the Book Machine, uh, which was uh, an active, uh, engaging uh, process of bookmaking on the fly uh, that we did uh, as an experiment in Antwerp. Uh, and later, uh, uh, my uh, partner Anita teaches uh, a facet of her course at U of T, which engages this idea of the Book Machine. Um, the the opportunities and challenges of cross-disciplinary work are are uh, are uh, a, a huge topic for us because we really do work on um, uh, all kinds of different uh, different things. I think that the uh, my my lack of uh, specialization uh, maybe at this point in in my career seems uh, like a, a, a great thing, but early on in I had a hard time just working uh, in the the uh, area that I wanted to, which was to, you know, become an architect and to draw and, and uh, understand buildings and learn construction. Uh, so uh, as a sidebar, I ended up becoming a carpenter and, uh, and then working on books and, and through the practice of making and learning how things come together, I really understood, uh, I guess, physically how something's done and then uh, I began to realize that it's uh, very important to draw and translate that. That was during school, that was after school. And, um, and then, you know, subsequently we, we you know, evolved as, uh, as we worked through uh, an awesome series of, of projects with, uh, with Bruce's studio. Um, one of the things that I guess I'm trying to do here with this uh, uh, overburdensome uh, presentation is uh, this notion of random curation and uh, both the selection of images and how we find work um, reflects this random nature of practice. Uh, when, when you're a uh, designer or an architect, I think it would be great if you lined up projects and some are fortunate enough to do that. Um, and things start and they work through and you have substantial completion and you finish and you start again but as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot tougher than you think. You, you have to take on things. Uh, sometimes they don't end. Sometimes they uh, are shorter than you thought. Uh, many projects start um, without actually really starting. And I think that, um, uh, you know, we, we try, therefore, to uh, filter and, uh, and, and be as amenable as possible um, in, in the midst of the, the chaos that comes at us. Um, uh, we deliberately, through a series of projects, um, with, in particular, I've shown a number of images of uh, uh, Olivo Barbieri, uh, who's an artist friend of mine. Uh, we, we build teams as needed and try and stay very lean in our practice. We uh, co-opt images, uh, we work with uh, artists, we work with filmmakers, we come together um, we execute almost on a contract basis, and then when the project is done, it dissipates, and uh, you have a kind of a management aftermath, which sometimes goes on for many years, and in our uh, case, we have the good fortune to be continuing to work with the, some of the same artists and some of the same curators um, doing continual uh, projects, uh, books, and uh, in the case with Olivo, these fabulous uh, fly-throughs of, uh, of cities around the world and, uh, and shooting uh, out of a helicopter um, to achieve uh, kind of a micro or a world in miniature, uh, which offers us, uh, uh, you know, uh, yet another perspective on, on the urban condition. So we tell stories through images. Um, we um, often, uh, in the idea of architecture as product with MECA modular buildings, uh, we don't engage a client directly, the client engages us. In order uh, for a relationship to be formed, you have to show people pictures and images. You have to show them renderings of what can be in order for uh, them to have the faith uh, in uh, calling you up and buying or spending uh, a considerable amount of their savings on a project which is uh, oftentimes um, 
everything to them. And therefore, the images that we make uh, which precede construction are, uh, as you guys know, with presentation critical. And it uh, is almost as important as the image you take after the fact. Um, so, you know, we're, we're always using images to express. We're always drawing. Uh, drawing is a, uh, also a critical uh, part of practice and something that I encourage you all to do. I have occasionally here shown you a sketch or something that I might be working on. Uh, because um, we are very engaged in, in drawing and in manifesting uh, diagrams and uh, expressing uh, our thoughts not only by quickly going and modeling on, on the computer, but also by um, allowing even a computer model to go through that iterative process by laying over trace, by drawing, by redrawing, by changing, and subtly uh, comparing, uh, which is something that I, I can't... Uh, speak uh, enough about. This was a great experiment right here in Los Angeles last year. We had a complete building failure. It fell down. But the exoskeleton of that particular building, uh, the steel exoskeleton, was sufficient to uh, keep the structure, lifted it back up and threw it in place. Um, so, you know, all I can say is that uh, in all design practices we collaborate, and I can't speak again enough about that collaborative uh, process. Um, stay lean, contract, expand, and then contract. Um, the, um, the, the lesson of, of uh, prefabrication and production is that uh, often when you design things and send them out the door, you're not really so aware of how you uh, engage uh, the, the work later. Uh, if, the, if the person who's making it does it according to the drawings, um, and uh, in our case, we've been very fortunate to both design, uh, kind of be a, a general contractor, learn to build, be the production manager, uh, oversee quality assurance, go on site, find out what went wrong, um, advise, uh, build, and uh, take out the tools and, and, and help along in many cases. And that's a very rewarding process as well uh, because the, uh, the opportunity to um, really build uh, a, a good number of the things that you take part in designing uh, teaches you so much because uh, so, uh, so many mistakes occur along the way. Uh, not, not necessarily mistakes, but things that, you, uh, that are unexpected occurrences on site that um, are overwhelming and that you have to come up with uh, quick and uh, 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 economical solutions for. Um, I guess one of the things that you know we, we focus it's a it's a bit of a bifurcated practice we on the one hand do a lot of work with um, uh, uh, publication and on the other it's uh, sort of a huge slant towards sustainability and in the background there's always music and there's always art and uh, that's the uh, the kind of uh, main message uh, is that you know um, all projects big or small can be opportunities to try and uh, uh, innovate, uh, save energy, use alternative methodologies, and uh, you know, even in the case of uh, a large-scale medical marijuana facility that I'm working on, that has a footprint of roughly the size of Collingwood, um, we are trying to come up with ways of offsetting uh, using any means possible, whether it's um, gathering uh, solar energy uh, on rooftops which doesn't help light the facility, but which does help create uh, some give back to harvesting water, to uh, you know, recycling, um, implementing sustainable farming on the remaining acreage, um, reducing uh, waste uh, through sort of effective management, which is all uh, about the building uh, trade and uh, construction process. And, um, and so even though the, the, the greatest, most wasteful project that I would be working on uh, uh, presents uh, unbearable um, uh, obstacles, we still try and, and take the simple, basic approach of doing the right thing and, and uh, offering opportunities to implement them. So happy to talk a little bit more if anyone has questions later. And I know we're sitting down to have a uh, panel discussion. But I just wanted to thank you for letting me show you 425 images of our work.